Hi, I'm Calvin Andrew here at Rochdale Football Club. It's Black History Month, and we here will be profiling people of the BAME community for people that have links to the club. Funny one, really. Um, playing a lot of Sunday League for, uh, for a long time. I didn't start uh, getting involved with the team until um, probably about 11, 12. Started playing for a, for a youth kids uh, team, and then got picked up by, from there by Peterborough. Uh, went uh, went on trial with them, and they were due to give me a, a YT at about the age of about 14, 15. They were looking to give me a, a, a pre-contract sort of thing, uh, and then we played against Luton in a game and scored a couple of goals against them. Then they realised that I was uh, originally living in Luton, and. Um, Went, signed, signed a, a YT with them, and I was a YT for probably about three months before I got pro. And uh, that's, that's really how it all, all began at, at Luton Town. I've had, um, I mean, a lot of the fans will probably already know my dad from, from coming to all the games and stuff like that. But yeah, my family have been a, a big support. I'm, I'm lucky in that way. Uh, my dad comes to pretty much all my games, he always has done. And, um, you know, my mum's always been involved. In, in um, you know helping me to do do my utmost on on the football pitch and off the football pitch. You need you need a good um, good backbone and, and you know support because football's not as easy as people people think it's mentally especially. I think uh, Thierry Henry probably the last one that I really look forward to is a fantastic football player. And I thought he was a great role model. But going back earlier than that, Ian Wright, big Arsenal fan myself. So uh, uh, Ian Wright was was massive, you know, playing on the playgrounds and stuff like that. He was he was the guy everyone wanted to be at the time. Uh, granted, he had uh, his own issues probably off the pitch of some things that um, he probably wouldn't have wanted, wanted to, to take in as a young kid. But, um, yeah, fantastic football player. And, you know, once he crossed those white lines, he, he, he always did the business. Loads, loads of adversities. Um, most of them, like I said, a lot of it's to be to do with you know the support of my, my, my friends and family. My family mainly um, have always helped me. And I think once you get through one big thing, I mean, I did my I've done my cruciate three times in my career, and if anyone knows those injuries, they're uh, they're pretty pretty lengthy injuries. You're looking at being out for a whole season. Um, long road to recovery and, and stuff like that and I think it was my second one I get confused now I think it was my second one um, ruptured a lot of different things in my knee and stuff like that and um, yeah the, the, the doctors had told me I might not play football again um, and I had to dig really deep and took a lot of time out and had to really focus on trying to see the end game of, of being able to play again against what they what they said and um, that was probably my, the biggest challenge I've, I've faced but uh, on the topic of what we're talking about today yeah, I've, I've had a lot of you know racial abuse and stuff like that in football and things like that and I think the first time it happens to you you're, you're a bit confused um, as to why you know somebody would deem you to be different than anyone else because of the colour of your skin but um, you know it's something you know we're working on as as, as humans, I guess, and we need to try and get it out of society as well as, as, as football and, uh, and, and sports. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, a real, a real honour, honour for, for myself. Um, I mean, as much as it's not about the award, you know, it's nice to be, to be, um, you know, acknowledged. For, for such work and, and stuff like that. I mean, you, you don't do it for yourself. You know, you go out there. I remember being a, a, a young, not even a pro, but being a young uh, football player and, you know, you know people idolise football players and stuff like that. And I remember sometimes getting to have people come to your school and speak and you're really in awe of what they say. Um, and it really goes in. It sticks a little bit more than, you know, your teachers and stuff like that, I guess. But... Um, yeah, so I'm just, you know, it's good to be able to, to give back and try and have that effect on, on some of the kids in, in, in the area, you know. I've got a few, to be honest. There's a lot. It's 
especially with Rochdale, we've, we've, we've had a few, haven't we? Um, I would probably say the one I remember really, 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 really the most out of all the good ones we've had here at Rochdale is when I was at Crystal Palace and the season we got deducted points in the championship and we fought to for nail to try and stay in the championship and we got right the way down to the last game of the season and we were playing Sheffield Wednesday and if Sheffield Wednesday beat us, they were down the bottom as well. They stayed up, we went down. If we beat them or drew with them, we stayed up and they went down and it went right down to the wire and it was uh, an amazing an amazing scene. We stayed up and fans flooded the pitch from both teams and it was it was carnage afterwards but wow, it was uh, it was an amazing, it was an amazing achievement considering we had points deducted, and you know everyone wrote us off at the start of the season. Um, a few, really, a few. Um, I'm planning on probably doing my uh, my, my coaching badges, but um, I've got a history for those that know me in uh, in drama and um, you know media type stuff. So I'm hoping to go in that direction. Really, that's that's a big passion of mine. Um, but uh, have the two plans to fall back on if one of them doesn't work because I guess the you know media stuff and uh, the, the whole drama thing is just as fragile as, as football in the way of you know millions try and only a, only a handful get chosen. Players, um, you have to, you have to, literally. The saying is true in the fact of people say that football is, a lot of it's played in your head, um, a lot of it's mental. Because um, more often than not, people have the ability, but it's being able to allow themselves, freeing themselves of the shackles of kind of um, fear, really, having the fear of not being able to do something or something not quite coming off. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's probably my, my biggest message for a player, is just to have no fear and you know, go for it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You just keep trying, keep trying. Um, for coaches and stuff like that, I guess it's quite a different thing for coaches. I think young, young coaches, it's it's a methodical thing. Um, I look at Brian now, and I, I look at before he became our manager and the hard work he put in in trying to understand the philosophies and tactics of the game, and. It really is a lot of homework, I guess, for coaches. I'd say, I'd say, do your homework is probably the easiest thing to say.